La persona que parlarà ara és el Malte Holler, que és historiador, especialista en l'Holocaust i en la història jueva d'Alemanya, i que és membre de la Junta Directiva d'una fundació filantròpica alemana, que es diu The Krausberg Initiative, contra l'antisemitisme, que intenta explicar o introduir què és l'antisemitisme i què va ser l'Holocaust entre la població, especialment en grups diversos, però sobretot entre la població musulmana turca que viu a Alemanya. És un enfocament que a casa nostra això ens costa, però probablement també és una iniciativa que podem aprendre per als propers temps, perquè també comencem a tindre una població musulmana força important, que normalment no coneix pràcticament res del que és en si mateix l'antisemitisme, perquè no és conscient i tampoc de la Shoah, i la seva experiència serà molt profitosa d'escoltar i ell té molt d'interès de tindre també al final un debat viu amb tots els presents a la sala. Per tant, Malta, Juan, tu mateix. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias por la invitación también aquí a Barcelona. Yo hablo algo de español, no hablo catalán. Lo siento, disculpen mi ignorancia. Pero mi presentación la voy a hacer en inglés porque es más fácil para mí por el vocabulario profesional y uh, por eso voy a ahora cambiar. Um, well, my name is Malta Holler. Uh, thank you for the introduction. Um, I'm from uh, an organization uh, in Berlin, Germany, called the Kreuzberg Initiative Against Anti-Semitism, short form KIGA. Um, KIGA uh, is an organization from civil society, a, originally a grassroots organization, and uh, it's uh, an NGO and nonprofit organization that is uh, mainly developing and conducting concepts and materials uh, on com for combating anti-Semitism in educational settings. Our main focus is the diverse society, that means a society that is uh, structured by um, different uh, influences uh, of different cultures, different ethnicities, different religions, um, as we found in uh, modern, modern European societies and elsewhere in the world. And uh, so I will explain more to that uh, in the course of my presentation. Um, a first remark also for my presentation, I would prefer to do it not as a whole lecture for one and a half hours, but uh, I'll try to make it shorter and give you, the audience, also um, the occasion and the possibility to ask questions uh, and to discuss certain points with me if you're interested in, because I think, um, and this is my experience also as an educator, um, that you might be inspired by your own questions on the topics uh, of anti-Semitism and also how to combat it by educational means. So uh, that would give us the opportunity together to discuss things uh, more uh, led by your questions you have on it. So um, I will start with uh, the history of uh, KIGA organization. And uh, first of all, I will start with the name of uh, the Kreuzberg in our name, Kreuzberg Initiative Against Anti-Semitism. Kreuzberg is a district of the city of Berlin. And uh, the Kreuzberg area uh, of Berlin is uh, German-wide known by its multicultural surrounding environment and uh, by a certain history of alternative lives and different lifestyles. So it is a quarter of the city of Berlin that is known for its diversity. Um, when, uh, so we, we decided once to uh, stay with the name of Kreuzberg because for us it was also a symbol for a certain diversity uh, of a society that uh, is found in our days in uh, many big cities and metropolis uh, over Germany and other um, European cities. 
Um, Kiga was established at the end of 2003, beginning 2004, uh, and we started as an initiative uh, in the district of uh, Kreuzberg, Berlin Kreuzberg, and uh, today we are working uh, Berlin-wide and also German-wide, and we are also running international projects and uh, corporations and networks. So. Um, when we started um, our decision to combat anti-Semitism by educational means was influenced by a rise of anti-Semitism that we could um, observe in these years. Uh, to remember the situation, um, we were confronted at the beginning of this century with a rising anti-Semitic atmosphere in many European countries and also in the Western world. Um, we had a global discussion of a phenomenon that we called the new anti-Semitism. That was mainly the questions, is there something like a new anti-Semitism we are confronted with? And uh, so to uh, remember also some incidents that led to these questions, uh, I would like to remember, of course, the second intifada that started in the year 2000, and uh, also of course, uh, the uh, attacks on the Twin Towers on 9-11 um, that also led to a lot of, uh, to many anti-Semitic rumors and uh, ideas of theories and ideologies of conspiration. And uh, also um, to a rising violence against Jews and Jewish institutions all over Europe. So we had terrible attacks in these years in France, but also in Germany and also uh, in Berlin-Kreuzberg, uh, where a synagogue was attacked. Um, another question that was connected, uh, or an observation that was made in these days, was that we were also confronted with a new group of perpetrators or people who committed uh, anti-Semitic uh, crimes. And these were mainly young male um, adults with a Muslim background. So um, that led to the question of uh, the new anti-Semitism. So um, that was a global debate. I mentioned that before. And uh, it had also connections with uh, historical and also moral dimensions and uh, was uh, discussed worldwide with uh, a lot of emotions also. Maybe the three main topics of the debate were, uh, first uh, of all, the question of the connections of anti-Semitism and criticism towards Israel. So where is uh, the step where a, legitim le uh, uh, a legal uh, critics on the state or the politics of Israel is going to be uh, anti-Semitic? Where is the limit? Uh, the second question was, uh, is there a special anti-Semitism among Muslim migrants or among Muslim societies and with a special, special semantic? And uh, the third point may be the question uh, that was uh, also an uh, issue of the last presentation, uh, the relation of anti-Semitism and the political left. Um, so, and here we focused mainly on the question of anti-Sionism. How far is anti-Sionism anti-Semitic and where does it start? And also the question of uh, a criticism towards the capitalistic uh, economical system and uh, where does it turn um, anti-Semitic uh, because of missing um, references maybe to uh, the topic. So today I would say most experts are uh, of the same, more or less on the uh, same opinion about the question of new anti-Semitism um, and we are today not talking about a new anti-Semitism with a specially new quality but uh, it seems that uh, the so-called new anti-Semitism is the same old anti-Semitism um, with uh, some uh, new images. 
So um, anti-Semitism in general is a phenomenon that has a highly potential to uh, adapt new forms and transform it in new phenomenons. So, uh, but we have still the same images and uh, the same references we know from classical anti-Semitism also. But what we observe is in our days uh, very often um, a clear reference to the conflict in the Middle East, the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. And of course, we also find anti-Semitism among Muslims and among Muslim migrants in Europe, for example. Um, and uh, we have also a certain, um, certain um, influences on both sides. So we have to have in mind that uh, there is also a relevance of uh, exclusion of Muslim societies in European societies that uh, can lead to certain forms of a competition. I mean, it's very hard. Uh, so we have um, in Germany, for example, or I think also in the Europe, European context and uh, also in the United States, uh, more or less a clear position that anti-Semitism is something evil that cannot be accepted um, when it's too obvious. And uh, so it's very hard if you have uh, other forms of discrimination you're suffering uh, on um, to be in competition with anti-Semitism. Um, so that could lead to certain difficulties. I think I will come back to that later and in, in our talk. Um, and we uh, observe also among Muslims um, some thesis about um, yeah, a certain uh, reception of uh, something that is called sometimes by Muslims uh, as a war of the West against the Muslims. And uh, we find certain forms of supporting of uh, the thesis that uh, there's something like an internal enemy ship between Muslims and Jews, especially. So that means we find evident, evidence of uh, anti-Semitism among Muslims. Um, but we ha also have to state that anti-Semitism is not a Muslim problem on its own. I mean, we have also a non-Muslim population and majority even in countries that is obviously anti-Semitic or shares anti-Semitic attitudes. Um, so for example, in Germany, um, the criminal statistic um, still shows that uh, most incidents, uh, anti-Semitic incidents, are committed by right-wing uh, extremists. Uh, but still, uh, we have the biggest danger of maybe these days uh, also by um, the uh, Islamist terrorism. Um, and that means also a physical danger for Jews and Jewish institutions uh, in our countries. Um, another thing that is important for the German case uh, might not be of uh, further interest for uh, Spain, but uh, you might know from the news, uh, we have a lot of Euro refugees also coming uh, these days to Germany. And uh, so that causes also concern that we have a, a relevant uh, racist mobilization against uh, these um, refugees. And this is uh, at the same time uh, in parts also an anti-Semitic mobilization. And uh, this is also something that uh, is, has to be observed uh, by the civil society and the official state. When we started our work in 2003-2004, um, in Germany the situation was uh, that um, there was not an um, a special education or formats for education on anti-Semitism. Anti-Semitism was seen also in the educational theory and practice as a sub-point of anti-racist and anti-bias education. 
Um, that was one of the ideas that we had when we started our work. In our analysis, there were uh, several differences uh, between um, other forms of racism and anti-Semitism. And I think the most uh, evident uh, form or difference is the idea of a Jewish conspiracy uh, and the idea of uh, the, and the quality of the Jewish power. Um, and uh, so in our analysis, that led also to the conclusion that um, if we are confronted with these differences, we would need certain special forms of education to combat it. So uh, we started to develop uh, concepts and materials to uh, confront um, phenomenons of anti-Semitism and also with a special focus on present forms of anti-Semitism because uh, this was the second uh, uh, missing link we had at anti-Semitism in the German educational uh, system and scenery was mainly seen or, uh, or dealt with as a point connected uh, to the history of National Socialism and the Shoah. So we thought it would not be enough to um, teach history because uh, what can we learn from history if we are confronted with uh, ideas of conspiracy and if we are confronted with um, anti-Semitic reactions uh, on, on the uh, conflict in the Middle East that are not directly connected to history uh, of the Shoah and the um, National Socialism. So um, we needed new arguments and new forms of uh, reaching people to talk about these and to work on these problems. Uh, and the final point uh, is an initiative point uh, for our work was uh, a debate in Germany that is in historical perspective uh, still um, young. Um, that is the question of uh, how we define modern Germany as a modern German society. Um, Germany uh, denied for many years uh, its status of a multicultural society. So until the uh, year of 1998, German citizenship uh, was defined by bloodline. So we had in Germany uh, the jus sanguinis instead of the jus solis. That means that if you were born from parents with, that were Germans, uh, you had access to German citizenship. If you were a child of uh, working migrants that uh, came to Germany in the 1960s or 1970s, and you lived there in second or even third generation, you didn't have any access to German citizenship. So that was a problem. Um, they changed this law in 1998, and Last year they changed it again, so uh, today it's quite different, but um, this is something like a heavy heritage um, of the self-definition of a nation. Um, this debate is very important because it concerns uh, and touches uh, many points uh, that are important also for the self-definition of people that are confronted with these definitions. Um, for example, if we look at the status of, uh, um, of migrants in Germany. Um, we had no data until uh, a couple of years ago about migrants in Germany, so no official number, and now they started to count them uh, as uh, people with migrant background. So this definition um, gives the idea, or the definition says that uh, people with migrant backgrounds are those people that immigrated to the territory of what is today the Federal Republic of Germany after the year of 1950. So that tells us also that um, if, you, if your family lived in Germany in uh, third generation, for example, um, you are still seen and defied, defined as a foreigner or a migrant. So um, this is somehow difficulty. Um, 
So this uh, debate is still uh, very vivid. Um, we had a lot of different points um, in this uh, debate that were influential. And so one of the main questions, for example, was um, does the Islam belongs to Germany and to the European culture? Um, and uh, so this is um, a story that is uh, still in move. So it's not finished. But it shows that is an important debate and uh, it's all about the new definition of a society. I mentioned before that um, we're focusing as an educational organization on present phenomenon of anti-Semitism and uh, that does not mean that we are not teaching uh, Holocaust history or a uh, history of National Socialism, but it's not our main focus. Our main focus is um, a sample of different topics that uh, we think are important to work on anti-Semitism as different elements of the phenomenon. Um, first of all, there is the conflict in the Middle East that is quite important because if you talk about uh, prejudice against Jews, um, you very uh, quickly come to the point you have to talk about the conflict, uh, the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. So uh, we developed uh, certain materials to uh, teach the conflict as a conflict that is not just bound uh, to two binary uh, identities, here are the evil Jews and here are um, the uh, good Palestinians that are um, oppressed by uh, the Israelis, but to show different perspectives of the phen phenomenon. We have uh, other topics we are working on, just like um, the uh, story, uh, the history of um, an um, of the local, uh, the local uh, national socialism and uh, Holocaust history on the, the local focus, because this is uh, one of the methods we use to uh, interest people and to uh, bring them on board to um, work with them, to open doors. And that means uh, that we are offering um, things they can recognize, they can uh, identify with, and uh, that could be, for example, the local uh, approach, dealing with local history on places uh, people know from their quotidian life, or the other possibility um, that is also uh, practiced in Germany is uh, to offer different um, perspectives of this history, uh, Holocaust history, for example, and also to work with uh, bi biographies or uh, stories that are bound to uh, people in Muslim surroundings, for example. Um, we are also working on uh, questions of um, economy and uh, so what does it mean, the connection that many people um, construct uh, of Jews to f the financial sphere of uh, the economic system. So we have a, we developed a workshop on this. We are working also on um, topics that are connected with, um, with Islam because uh, we have a lot of uh, Muslims uh, living in the Kreuzberg area and in the city of Berlin and in Germany in general. Um, a lot of them uh, with uh, Turkish roots, but uh, also from Arab countries and uh, others. Um, so we developed also uh, workshops on uh, and projects on these topics. Um, for example, uh, we deal with um, historical perspectives on uh, Jewish-Muslim uh, relations. We are working also uh, in projects and also in peer-to-peer -peer projects with uh, topics of um, Muslim identity in a Christian majority country. Um, we are working also um, with uh, um, reference to 
are radical Islam and political Islam um, and running preventative programs to um, enforce people uh, not to radicalize in these directions. Um, our target groups are um, people in diverse environments um, that are diverse groups um, with different uh, ethnical, cultural, religions, religious identities um, within. And uh, so that is uh, the case in, for example, the city center of Berlin, but also in many other uh, cities in Germany. So, uh, for example, in uh, our partner schools, we meet school classes where we are confronted with uh, sometimes 60, sometimes 70, 80, 90, or even 100% of students that are raised in Muslim um, families. Um, Berlin also, especially uh, as a city, has uh, another uh, thing that is important for our work, uh, hosts Berlin, the city hosts the largest community of Palestinians uh, outside the Middle East. That is also influential if we talk about the conflict in the Middle East. We are confronted with situations where people also um, suffered uh, in their family history uh, by this conflict. And so we have to um, include these experiences also in our work. Uh, to be able to confront them uh, and to uh, reflect about anti-Semitic prejudice. So we are not just working with school kids and teenagers. Uh, so um, this is a very important field for us because uh, there we um, make our experiences and there we try concepts. Uh, if they work or not, and uh, there we uh, some have a lot of experience that helped us a lot also to, um, to develop our concepts. Um, but we are also working with uh, teachers and social workers uh, or uh, also um, people from public administration um, and uh, any kind of players um, in the field of uh, diversity of migration, of in integration in society and in the state. So um, this is important for us because it's not enough just to care about the youth. I think it's very important to have in mind that um, the adults and also the, um, social, the social environment is quite important for, uh, for a successful combat against anti-Semitism. Um, what we find uh, working with uh, youth with or without a background of migrant history, um, and that's uh, what we know also from empirical research, it's not done by us but uh, by uh, researchers in Germany, um, we cannot really say that Muslims are, or we cannot prove that Muslims are more anti-Semitic than non-Muslims, uh, but if we compare different groups, we find certain uh, differences in how they relate to certain issues. So um, with uh, youth that are socialized in Muslim environments or families, uh, we find more reference, for example, to Israel if we are confronted with anti-Semitic statements. Um, meanwhile, uh, by non-Muslim German youth, uh, we find more um, anti-Semitic attitudes that are connected to the negative German history, so that um, didn't want to, um, that, that does not want to accept the negative um, um, correspondence to uh, the um, German identity. I mean, Germany is a very special case. We have a, a history of uh, National Socialism and Holocaust, so um, this is, uh, per definitionem, a very negative uh, reference for a 
identity, for a collective identity. So people try to get rid of it. And uh, this is what we also meet with uh, uh, or find in uh, these groups. Uh, and what is also a real problem is that we are confronted with a rising anti-Muslim racism also in our countries. And uh, this is also uh, what we um, have to have in mind when we talk about anti-Semitism. So parts of the discourse in Germany, and uh, I know that it's similar in other European countries, is uh, in, at the present um, a little bit covered by the discourse on Islam. So that means if we talk about anti-Semitism, most people think uh, they are talking about Muslims. So um, that means the debates on anti-Semitism sometimes loses uh, the, sub the subject um, or just um, go on a way uh, that is important but not enough to talk about because anti-Semitism is still a problem of the whole society and not just on a, of a single group. So. Um, the empirical studies uh, we had in Germany showed that um, for, especially for youth, uh, there are a lot of influences that are important, how they develop their attitudes uh, also towards Jews or uh, in the anti-Semitic se uh, uh, sense, um, that are more complex than just um, the belonging or the um, 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 identity with a certain group. It is uh, not always about uh, religious or ethnical uh, uh, identity, but um, much more about concrete experiences um, that youth make in their environment. And that means that uh, the social environment is very important, the media is quite important, internet and so on. Uh, and uh, also an, any kind of institution and person who is around them and influential on them, like uh, uh, could be in the mosque, could be uh, the trainer in, in the soccer team or whatever. Um, and of course, uh, another institution that's quite important is the school. So if we look, um, in our experience, if we look at uh, youth, uh, are they anti-Semitic and what forms of anti-Semitism we find? Um, we must say, our, in our experience, uh, it's almost never um, that we find closed forms of ideological uh, or closed ideology, ideologies of anti-Semitism, but a lot of fragmentary knowledge uh, about Jews or what's supposed to be Jewish. Um, that means um, that is very uh, sometimes uh, nearly chaotic knowledge and it's of course not real knowledge. It is, um, um, it is an idea about Jewishness, what it is, what it means. Uh, and uh, for example, uh, could be that uh, big companies belongs to Jews or that's what people think they do. And uh, there's no real substance in that. So we cannot really find a structural new anti-Semitism, um, but we find a lot of different historical, political, or cultural um, connections or um, references uh, in the construction of their identities uh, and also in their attitudes. Um, what we see is, uh, or what we find very often is um, that people want others to acknowledge their own experiences, their personal experiences or familiar experiences of discrimination or exclusion. Um, this seems to be very important uh, also if you want to talk about anti-Semitism, uh, to acknowledge that there are other forms that are more connected to people that are normally not confronted in their quotidian life uh, with Jews, with real Jews. Um, the Jew is mainly an image. Um, 
And what we also find is very few knowledge um, that is connected with a high grade of emotionality. So that means uh, that the issue of Jewish topics uh, of uh, Holocaust history, of anti-Semitism or Israel um, leads to or mobilizes a lot of emotions. And that is also very important to know if you, we want to work at, in education on anti-Semitism. Uh, and we are also confronted sometimes with uh, resistance. So people don't want to learn about this topic. They don't want to reflect. So um, this is about the youth. When we now look uh, at uh, pedagogues, at teachers, disseminators, um, social workers, uh, we made different experiences. Um, especially uh, in the schools, it is evident that even in uh, diverse cities like Berlin, uh, the teachers in schools are still uh, very, uh, or in their majority, in their large majority, uh, white Germans. So they are not migrants, but um, the majority of the students are migrants. So uh, there's a certain contradiction in this. Uh, we find sometimes very uh, uh, highly engaged um, people, very active teachers that are really uh, conscious about problems they see in, in their school life uh, and want to do something against it. Uh, but then we uh, uh, have also problems with uh, the form of the institution school that limitates us also. We are not always free to choose what is important for us because uh, it's always also about knowledge and people uh, want uh, or find it uh, more important to learn math than uh, learn about anti-Semitism. So there are, of course, these kind of problems. Um, and what we always find in all kind of schools is that uh, school teachers um, find themselves in an tenuous field um, between or among the, in between the topic of anti-Semitism, they uh, want to do something about it, but they share sometimes also similar attitudes. Is it toward Jews or is it towards uh, the students they're working with? So also teachers can be anti-Semitic or share attitudes uh, that are anti-Semitic, uh, and they can share also attitudes that are anti-Muslim, racist, or whatever. And uh, so they feel very often very unsecure how to deal with the problem. Most teachers are afraid of uh, the outbreak of uh, real conflicts in the classroom um, that they cannot control. And this is connected also to the uh, high grade of emotions that are a result of the topic or t how, we, how we talk about. So, but uh, the schools and school teachers uh, are looking for methods and uh, concepts and uh, they want to be qualified and that's what we also doing in uh, the KIGA or in our KIGA uh, organization. Um, so I will uh, say a few more words about uh, our work, what uh, kind of projects are we running. So uh, I mentioned already that we are developing methods and concepts um, for schools and youth centers, uh, how they could teach on uh, topics like anti-Semitism, political Islam, and also uh, history and politics. We uh, developed um, a couple of one-day workshops because uh, this format is the easiest to integrate in school life. Um, but, of course, um, a one-day workshop on prejudice is like a drop in the ocean, so we prefer to work on long-term with groups um, to go deeper and to open the space for more reflection. Uh, and um, so, but this is, of course, a smaller target group that we can reach with this, but uh, this is very important for us. 
Um, we offer trainings and uh, qualifyings for uh, teachers and instructors uh, to uh, give them skills and materials uh, so they could repu reproduce uh, our concepts uh, with their, in, their, in their own settings. Uh, and we are doing also consulting and coachings for uh, schools, for example, but also for, um, for political structures on local level, uh, but also on uh, national level. Um, so uh, we uh, have a certain um, activities also where we are counseling uh, politicians and uh, one of our colleagues, Ajan Demirel, is also part of an expert group that is uh, um, uh, writing now the second report in behalf of the German parliament, the Bundestag, on the topic of anti-Semitism in Germany. Uh, and of course, we are participating and organizing uh, also academic debates. Um, so uh, that means conferences, uh, um, exchanges, and so on. So our, um, our uh, concrete projects are, uh, at the moment, uh, we have uh, three from uh, January on uh, four projects uh, in our organization. Uh, one is uh, in the field of anti-Semitism originally. We are developing materials uh, and uh, uh, preparing an internet platform for exchange of experts and people who wants to get informed about that. Um, the other project is on um, uh, nationwide activities where we are supporting also uh, local structures all over Germany. Uh, to find ways to teach on anti-Semitism or to get active, uh, to combat it uh, in multicultural settings uh, and diverse uh, societies. Uh, we are uh, also uh, having an international program where we're cooperating uh, with uh, international partners. Uh, at the moment, we are uh, having an uh, exchange uh, with experts in Turkey about uh, working about educational work on Holocaust history and anti-Semitism. Uh, and we are uh, sharing skills and uh, exchanging experiences. Uh, that's uh, quite fruitful uh, and interesting for us also. Um, so, and we'll have uh, other conferences uh, in the next years, uh, international conferences. Uh, and the third program we are running now is on uh, so-called de-radicalization, so that uh, is uh, abo about um, Muslim identity, anti-Muslim racism, and prevention of radicalization uh, of youth. So um, I will skip the project that will be starting next year. Um, so uh, let's come to our approach. Well. Um, so um, I'm already done. So I would like to say something um, about our approach, our educational approach. Um, so the topics we are dealing with are controversial and explosive. So uh, our question is how to get through if you want to talk about it. It's, for us, it's no solution to avoid talking about these things because uh, they are there, present in society, and uh, we have to face uh, ourselves um, and face these problems. Um, so uh, I said that we are working with heterogeneous, diverse groups, and that is what we are also trying to reflect in our team. So uh, Kiger, uh, as an organization, uh, um, is also a diverse organization, so for us it's very important to uh, have a team that is mixed by uh, religious, cultural, um, ethnical backgrounds. So, and if we go to a school class, for example, um, we also want to represent what we are talking about. We want also to give role models. We want to show that you can be a Turkish Muslim, for example, uh, and be interested in uh, the topic of anti-Semitism and teach about it um, and criticize it. Um, so, and uh, so show also 
possibilities to get out of uh, these uh, structures of uh, forced identities and group identities. So our materials and concepts uh, try to, um, we try to uh, make them um, orientated or yeah, design them in orientation of the interests of the people we are working with. That means uh, choosing subjects that might be interesting for the people we are working with. Um, picking up interests they share. Um, reflecting and uh, analyzing and introducing also their life reality. So this is very important for us um, to um, um, find ways to pick them up, to get interested and get involved uh, in this process of uh, reflection about prejudice. Um, and then we have what we call the pedagogy of acknowledgement and uh, this um, is about the acknowledgement also of um, negative experiences that our target groups might have that might be the experience of discrimination in the person personal discrimination or in the family as for example as migrants as Muslims in Germany as uh, foreigners in, in mainly white Christian country um, and of course uh, what is uh, important is the transfer of knowledge we cannot uh, combat anti-semitism without a certain knowledge but we have to reflect and have in mind that um, we have to work on two levels, on both levels, that is uh, the cognition and also the effective level. Um, so anti-Semitism as a structure of prejudice is um, an ideology or an ideological formation uh, that works um, also with emotions and it seems to, on a rational way, it seems to explain things we don't understand. So we have to reach both levels and uh, work on these uh, both um, points to uh, get forward. And uh, finally, uh, we're working with um, methods of multi-perspectivity that is quite important because uh, anti-Semitic thoughts tends uh, to positions that see the world as black and white, um, as good as, and evil. Um, this is of course not the case. The world is complex, the world is complicated. So, and this is uh, one of the basic elements we see uh, as a necessary step to combat anti-Semitism to reflect about this complicity and uh, also to, um, to uh, take a position on this and to enable people to, uh, to stand the complicity. So to, um, Sorry. Um, so uh, that means um, so um, multi-perspectivity is a central moment in our methods, in our uh, methodology. Uh, also irritation, because we are confronted with things that are believed by our target group sometimes. So um, we all know stereotypes and we all believe a part of them. Um, so this is a part of a prejudice that uh, some of them even have a rational background or a rational part. So um, we have to irritate these images that we all have in mind. So this is also something that we do in our methodology. Uh, and of course we are confronting our target groups with topics they maybe have never thought about, or offering them new perspectives, new angles of view um, to look at um, the same phenomenon from different perspectives. So if we are talking about education 
on anti-Semitism and how to combat anti-Semitism with educational means. Um, our years of more than ten, or our experience of more than ten years, um, leads us to certain recommendations. First of all, we have to support a certain ability of changing perspectives. So people must be able to see different interpretations of the same, same thing and acknowledge them as different points of views and to enable them to think about them with uh, rational means. That means we have to confront them with new perspectives, new points, uh, new, the multi-perspectivity, uh, and enable them to critically reflect about them and reflect about also themselves as person with own thoughts and own um, abilities of changing minds. So um, we have also as a necessary step to come to this point um, the challenge to um, have a confidential atmosphere of teacher and student or of advisor and uh, pupil. And uh, so that means we need um, confidential, but we have also to irritate views that we th are convinced about. We have to focus on relevant topics that are important based on our analysis of anti-Semitism to confront people with. That is, in our days of high importance, the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. We cannot avoid talking about them and discussing them also as a problem. We have to include religion, question of also religious fundamentalism. We should talk about economy and we should talk about historical narratives. All these are important elements that are part of the process, how we talk about prejudice and different interpretations of the world, of the society, uh, and of our self-identity, self-understanding. It is quite important to come to a point where your expertise is acknowledged by your target group. That means we need an atmosphere where we trust each other. That means it should not be forbidden to mention things that might be problematic, but also be authentic enough to um, put your limits. This is very important, I think, for a pedagogical process. And uh, that could be also important, I uh, mentioned before, that we are working in mixed teams also. And uh, so the um, acceptance of your intervention uh, can, in certain situations, also depend on your position and what you are representing. So, for example, if uh, I go to a school class uh, that, is, uh, that consists in 90 or 100 percent of Muslims, um, I might get a problem uh, to talk with them about Islam or the problems of political interpretation of uh, Muslim um, beliefs. So um, that means we also need different disseminators, different teachers, and include their experiences, their identities, and uh, their roles also in the society and in the groups we want to work with. So uh, in general, we need uh, also a long-term preventional concept and uh, not um, an intervention when it is too late. And this is 
um, unfortunately very often the case so um, that for example in our work um, school teachers call us or schools call us when they had any anti-semitic incidents or something like that any problem with the pupils and students so they call us uh, and uh, ask for help so but uh, normally at this point it's uh, also sometimes too late to intervene because then you have to uh, go a step back and maybe sometimes uh, do some de-escalation work or something but you cannot really work on the topics that would be necessary uh, for on the long term we need um, also um, good and continuous corporations uh, of uh, schools and uh, extrascholar uh, educational institutions uh, and also in the social space, uh, neighborhoods and so on. We need more concepts and we need more um, activities to combat anti-Semitism uh, and other forms of uh, racism. We have to qualify teachers and disseminators, and we have to enable people to deal with a critical um, stand to deal with media, social media, but also newspapers or television. So, um, because our world is dominated by very uh, quickly communicated uh, news, and uh, most people um, don't really uh, are not really aware of uh, the problems that are connected with that. So, especially in, in social media, we observe a lot that uh, all kind of rumor uh, is believed and uh, without um, contradiction. So, I would stop here and uh, would be happy if you have any questions I could answer uh, or um, remarks um, about uh, my presentation. Uh, and maybe also uh, we could include uh, ideas or comparisons uh, of the situation here in Catalonia. I don't know if uh, you've ever thought about that, but uh, I would be happy if uh, our experiences from Berlin uh, could contribute uh, to your wishes and uh, your activities or uh, problems here. So, um, yeah, I'm looking forward for your question. Thank you very much. Malte, gracias por la presentación. Eh, mira, da la casualidad de que hace, ¿se me oye? Sí. De que hace dos semanas hemos hecho un viaje a Alemania con mi esposa. Eh, la primera etapa de nuestro viaje era a Berlín eh, y dedicamos un día a Kreuzberg, precisamente. Eh. Y paseando por Kreuzberg, eh, por pura curiosidad, terminamos entrando en una iglesia protestante, eh, Martas, probablemente la conozca cerca de College Park, eh, en la que bueno, nos enseñaron, eh, dio la casualidad de que nos vieron y nos mostraron la iglesia y las actividades que hacían eh, para intentar mmm, cambiar un poco eh, la educación eh, de la población básicamente musulmana, turca, etcétera, etcétera. Entonces, tienen un centro social. ¿eh? Y nos hablaban de la enorme dificultad eh, de llegar a la población eh, eh, y cambiar las actitudes eh, de, tan tradicionalmente marcadas en este tipo de, de sociedades. Eh. Entonces, ellos tenían dos problemas. Eh. El primero de ellos es cómo llegaban a la mayor parte de la población porque entendían que la labor social que estaban realizando era muy limitada, eh, solamente un porcentaje muy pequeño, y además la importancia de hacer una labor a largo plazo. Es decir, no, no se trataba de 
hacer una charla, eh, un par de charlas, eh, sino de movilizar a la gente que fueran al centro social y que a través de su estancia en el centro social eh, progresivamente fueran cambiando sus actitudes. Eh. Entonces, tengo curiosidad eh, en este sentido, y esta es la primera pregunta, saber cómo abordáis vosotros esta necesidad de llegar al máximo de la población, no solamente un porcentaje muy pequeño, eh, y de darle continuidad eh, a ese trabajo. Esa es la primera pregunta. Eh. La segunda pregunta es, la segunda etapa de nuestro viaje eh, era Dresde, eh, y dio la casualidad de que estábamos en Dresde eh, el día de la famosa manifestación de Peguida, y estuvimos, bueno, terminamos en medio de la manifestación. Bueno, Peguida, para los que no suena el nombre, es una organización de derecha, ultraderecha, eh, en contra de la llegada de inmigrantes a a Alemania. ¿eh? Entonces, bueno, venía muy a cuento, ¿eh? después de vivir la realidad de Kreuzberg y de la dificultad de la integración de los inmigrantes, ¿eh? Eh, ver cómo en el otro lado estaba la reacción anti-inmigrantes. ¿eh? Y mi pregunta específicamente, y esto es curiosidad, es ¿cuánto hay de antisemitismo en Pegida. En este caso era reacción ante los, contra los inmigrantes de Siria y de Irak, ¿eh? Pero ¿cuánto hay de antisemitismo eh, en esta organización de Pegida y cómo se lucha en Alemania contra esta organización? Uh, yeah, thank you very much. Um, so uh, your first question was uh, how, how do we reach uh, as many people as possible? Um, so yeah, the question would be what is possible, and what not, and what is recommendable. Uh, I think this is not necessarily the theme. Um, but um, so, of course, we are trying to uh, go on different channels, yeah? Um, so um, for our work with youth, uh, we are cooperating with schools and um, other uh, educational uh, institutions where uh, we reach um, young people. Um, This is the easiest, it's not easy, but it's the easiest way, so, um, but uh, it is also not so easy because uh, in Germany we are not part of the school system. That means uh, we are offering services from outside. Um, that means uh, to get entry to a school, um, you need a good network, uh, so you have to know teachers or the direct director of the school or whatever, um, or you have to uh, go and ask for it. So um, we uh, tried to establish, um, of course, uh, a network of uh, cooperative schools and school teachers to, uh, um, to get access to our groups, and um, so it works. Um, Then we have other channels we try to uh, we try to use like um, public events, for example, yeah, or uh, scientific conferences. Uh, we organized uh, German-wide conferences uh, together with partner organizations uh, for um, exchange um, of uh, scientists and practitioners, so where they could meet and uh, exchange experiences and learn from each other. Um, then we have uh, a lot of uh, different partners we are working with um, uh, in different networks. Um, we are uh, part of an uh, uh, educational uh, network uh, in Berlin uh, on education on anti-Semitism. We are also uh, members of a network of different uh, historical and political uh, institutions, um, educational institutions, um, where we designed uh, programs together. So, um, and, uh, so it depends a lot of uh, what you want to reach. Uh, but you have, in, have to have in mind that uh, education has its limits. So uh, that means if um, we uh, work Uh, in a school class, for example, doing workshops or even a seminar week or running an, uh, 
um, project, educational project for all school year, um, we are limited to the school. Uh, we are not reaching families and friends normally, yeah? Um, because there it turns into social work. We are not social worker, we are uh, political educators. Um, so I think um, it's important to have a realistic uh, view on uh, your activities and what you can reach and then decide what is good for that. I hope it's uh, clear enough. Uh, so um, the other question is uh, the Pegida movement. Uh, I don't know if you are familiar with the Pegida movement, so you, you explain a little bit. We have a very uh, um, uh, ugly phenomenon in Germany uh, for uh, for month already. I mean, it started one year ago or more than one year ago that um, uh, certain groups uh, started to um, um, assemble in streets or uh, doing rallies together. Um, and um, th these were uh, a movement of different, uh, different groups. Some of them were very much connected to uh, conspiracy uh, ideologies. Uh, others were just, uh, um, were just an anti-refugee movement uh, and so on. Um, we find anti-Semitism in uh, all kind of these groups, in different groups, but not all of them are anti-Semitic. So I cannot give any exact number, and uh, I'm not too familiar with this movement uh, in, in detail to give you an exact uh, answer, but uh, we find a lot of uh, uh, references uh, to anti-Semitism, yes. Uh, 